Welcome to our daily Timothy time. My name is Carl Coates and it's a privilege, pleasure and an absolute joy to be with you once again with an open King James Bible doing a short topical study today looking at the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment. Just some basic facts that us as members of the church, the body of Christ need to know. So that's what we're going to do today. But before I get into that, as you came into the video, you would have seen today's read. If you are following the Our Daily Timothy Time reading, today we're in Philippians, the book of Philippians. That's where we're at. And Luke chapter 7. Enjoy the read. Any questions from that? Please submit them in the comment box below. Let's have a look at your questions. Then lastly, in the way of housekeeping, in the description box down below, there's some really helpful links. Please take the time to look at those links. You'll be glad you did. Right, let's get into what I want to cover today. It's pretty much off the cuff. I don't have an outline or notes. Um, this is just on my mind. It's just something that I want to bring up. I want to share uh, my thoughts about the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment with you. In a, just to give some basic facts, because in my dealings with some, of the, uh, some folks out there in Christendom, it's quite apparent that there's not the judgment seat of Christ is not a well understood event, uh, um, and then there's the great white throne judgment. Is that a well understood event? Well, we can all sit down and study it and get a better understanding of it. Sure, absolutely. But I just want to touch on the basics today. So allow me just to use the chalkboard. Let me. We've had some good report about the chalkboard actually. Some of the folks that watch have said, hey. They've really, it's been helpful and they've enjoyed it. So I want to once again uh, uh, practice using the chalkboard. So follow me, just, just listen to me, follow the drawings and I'll talk you through it. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. And what's the goal here? Number one, we're going to look at the judgment seat of Christ. Who is it for? When is it? And then when we deal with that, you'll learn that you cannot lose your salvation at the judgment seat of Christ. When you get reviewed at the judgment seat of Christ, it's about your service as a servant, your sufferings as a soldier, and your conduct as a son. This is a very, you can, we could spend a lot of time studying this, but those are the three basic reviews in my current level of understanding that happened for us as members of the church, the body of Christ, at the judgment seat of Christ. And it's not about whether you're going to lose your... You, listen, once you in the body of Christ, you, cannot, you, you are eternally secure. You cannot lose your salvation. So the judgment seat of Christ is not about, oh, I'm going to get there and I'm going to, get, I'm going to lose my, my position in Christ. No, it's not about that at all. Okay. And then you've got the great white throne judgment. That's for the dead, the lost of all the ages they go up and they get reviewed there if you want to know the principles of that judgment you got to romans chapter 2 speaks about that it's quite interesting to see the principles of that judgment who sits on the great white throne well the lord jesus christ himself the son of god sits on that throne he also sits on the beamer seat the judgment seat of christ now if you've never trusted in the finished work of jesus christ that it, it, uh, and, and rested and relied exclusively on Calvary's cross in the work that was done by the Lord Jesus Christ there. Christ Jesus coming to being uh, the Son of God, coming to earth, living a sinless life, going to Calvary's cross, shedding his blood, dying, being buried, and rising in the third day. If you've never trusted that, if you've never, let, let me break it down like this. Number one, you need to know and recognize that you're a sinner. There's nothing you can do. To earn your way into heaven. You, you and I needed a redeemer. right? We need a redeemer. And that redeemer. There's only one. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's number one. You've got to recognize you're a sinner. Now the topic of sin. Let me just put it like this. If you've told one lie in your life. You're, you, you're, you're a sinner. So my friend. You and I are sinners. Now positionally being a believer. We are in Christ now. But do we still stuff up every day? You bet you do. Do we want to know? Do we? Yes, sadly. So here's the thing. Number one, you've got to recognize you're a sinner. Number two, there's a free gift of eternal life through, through Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. Number three, it's going to, the, the, the only response that grace 
accepts is faith. You need to respond to that to what's happened. Christ dying on the cross, shedding his blood. Through a one-time response of faith, you go, hey, I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died for me on the cross. And one, the moment you believe that and rest and rely exclusively on that, you're out of Adam into Christ. Then you're a member of the church, the body of Christ. Okay. So then when you die or when you, if you died, maybe you've got loved ones that have died. Okay. Or if you and I are still alive when the, when the catching away takes place, they're, they're getting caught up together in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4. We will meet the dead in Christ and us will meet the Lord in the air. We go to then go to the judgment seat of Christ. And then, we, we, then our works down here get reviewed. And after that, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, presents us to God the Father, who puts us out in our uh, 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 positions of, of authority, if you can say it like that, and that's we, and, and for in places where we can function out there in, in, in the heavenlies. Remember, Israel are an earthy people. We are a heavenly people. So let's quickly... And then and the great white throne judgment, that's for the dead. Okay, the, the lost. They, they get judged and they go... In fact, let's go, let's go see what happens to them. Revelation 20, uh, verse 14. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay, so what you want to do is... You've just heard the gospel. Think about it. And believe it, and then you won't be one of those people in Revelation 20. Okay, let's quickly draw the timeline. Paul, our apostle Paul, looks at the scripture, and he sees the scripture, and so should we. Time passed. But now, and the ages to come. This is all Ephesians chapter 2 stuff, okay? Now, very quickly, the timeline. In time past, you had the circumcision and the uncircumcision. There's Calvary's cross. There's Acts 1 to 7. Israel stumbled at the cross. They fell at the stoning of Stephen. So Israel fell in Acts 7. They diminished down to Acts 28. Okay. This is known. This is the prophetic program. Okay, now in Acts chapter 9, the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven's glory saves Saul of Tarsus, Paul. And he ushers in the dispensation of grace. This is, an, uh, and he's forming the body of Christ. This is the dispensation, I'll just put you a dispensation of grace. When the dispensation of grace, when, when the rapture takes place, should we say it like that rather? We go to the judgment seat of Christ. So now can you see where that is on the timeline? Okay, on the timeline, the judgment seat of Christ happens first. Then, the prophetic program takes off where it left off. Let's just put your prophetic. Okay? You've got the time of Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week happens, then you've got the second advent, Christ comes back to earth, sets up his heavenly kingdom, you've got the thousand year introductory period to his kingdom, and after that, uh, Revelation 20 takes place. Um, you've got the great white throne judgment. Okay. So this happens second. So let's look at the order. The first event that takes place is the judgment seat of Christ for us as members of the church, the body of Christ. The second event, the second judgment, the, uh, uh, is the, ju the great white throne judgment. That is for the lost of all the ages there. In the thousand year millennial period, time of Jacob's trouble before that, and that little gap there, the dispensation of grace, all the way back into time past. All the dead from the, from the ages, they go to the great white throne judgment. If you want to know the principles for that judgment, Romans chapter 2. You read about the principles for that judgment. The Lord Jesus Christ sits on that throne and judges. The Lord Jesus Christ sits on this throne and judges the members of the church, the body of Christ. These guys, this, the corporate, the body of Christ, this corporate body here, when you individually stand there, you cannot lose your salvation. Please remember that. The folks that go to the great white throne judgment, they go to the lake of fire. The second death. 
And I've shared the gospel in this video already so that you don't have to go to this judgment here. Now, you want some scripture to read. You want to read up about the judgment seat of Christ. I'm just going to give you the passage and you give it a read. Read 1 Corinthians, I'd say from verse 6 on down to verse 15. Please take the time and read that. And in the great white throne judgment, Revelations 20, read, well, you might as well just read the chapter. Okay. They're two separate events for two separate groups of people. Okay. The unsaved from all the ages go to that one. The church, the body of Christ go to that one. This is a good thing for us. That's a bad thing for them. Right. <laughs> what a topic here. There's so much more we could dig down into here. There really is. But for simplicity's sake, let's just leave it as it is. So, quick recap. Which of the two judgments come first? Well, the judgment seat of Christ happens first. Who is the judgment seat of Christ for? It's for, the, for, the member, for members of the church, the body of Christ. The second... Uh, a judgment is the a great white throne judgment that happens in in the chronicle in the chronological order second okay and of the two that i'm talking now and that is for the the the, the dead the the lost of all the ages they all stand up there and they get judged and the principles for that judgment are found in romans chapter 2 now maybe you're following along in our study of the book of romans i hope you are if you are in a couple of weeks' time, we're going to be in Romans 2 looking at those principles. It's rather interesting, and it's something we need to know. Now, the, lastly, the judgment seat of Christ, Paul brings up in the book of Romans 2. So we will look at that in, 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 a, in a couple of weeks' time. So this is not something that, that's, that's not relevant, you don't really need to know about. We need to understand this stuff, folks. We need to walk in an, in an intelligent understanding of what God is doing today in this dispensation of grace. So we need to know that we're going to end up at the judgment seat of Christ. Not there. Anyway, time's up for today. Keep your sword sharp, soldier, till we meet next time. Any questions, please submit them down in the comment box below. Let's have a look at them. Grace and peace to you, Maranoth.